top of the hill here where the Hobbit house is. Uh, and I'm going to go over to the power station. Oh, I am parked. Okay, here we go. This is good. I got this thing that I can wear on my neck to to have my hands free. So, see, I got both hands on the wheel, uh, and I can see the road, and I'm not even looking at the screen. So this is great. we got a little snow up here. Oh, getting a little sideways. I do have four-wheel drive. I'm not going to turn it on just yet. I'm going to see how we can do it without it, just to know uh, when other cars come up here. I will probably go in four-wheel drive here pretty soon. But here we are. This is the power station. There is a pile of panels there that we haven't put up on the house yet. There is the shed that we call the pavilion. And we are sliding around. <laughs> That's kind of fun. I'm actually really impressed with how the truck is handling the, the snow. All right. Here we go. I'm going to put a beanie cap on because it's going to be cold out there. All right, ready guys? Here we are. I can't see any chat. I wonder what's going on with chat. Sorry, I can't see any chat. I wonder where it is. Well, there's chat. Live chat. All messages are visible. Uh, oh, there's chat. Oh, now I see chat. Oh, good. Well, it's too close to my eyes for me to read it. I'm going to need to get some glasses if I'm going to read this. Okay, this should be good. Sorry about the delay. We had uh, a ton of snow in our area today, and the roads were miserable for the first hour and a half of my two-and-a-half-hour drive, so it became more of a four-hour drive. Ow! Ah. All right, here we are. Let's see, you can make this comfortable. Perfect. Okay, there's the Hobbit house down there. It looks pretty cool with the snow on it. That's the first time I've seen it covered in snow. Pretty sweet. There's Aidendale. All right, so we are gonna put more panels up there. We're gonna extend this roof out. So these holes and the, and the cement there, those are uh, pillars for new footings that we're going to put in. So, that, whoa, whoa, almost fell in the snow. <laughs> new footings that we're going to put in to, uh, to support these new panels up here. Okay. This is, since I'm down here on the first floor, this is the generator. Uh, let me see. Hopefully the battery is still working on it. Oh, doggone it. We may need to jump start that. Because they turn off, stop turning off the frickin' breaker. Oh, man, who's doing that? Okay, we may be okay. Yeah, we may be okay. Okay, that breaker, <laughs> not that it matters to you guys, but that breaker there, uh, the small one, powers the battery charger for this. This thing has a car battery in it, and I've had to replace three car batteries because I couldn't figure out how to keep them charged, but now I've got them figured out. It just somebody keeps turning off that breaker. Okay, this is our little swing and our beautiful view out here. Isn't that lovely? It's lovely to me. All right, up the stairs. This is where the magic happens in the power station here. So that there is the inverter and the charger. I took, I took the panel off because I was messing with it the other day. How much land do I own? 40 acres, 40 acres up here. This is Aiden Dale. All right, so this tells me right now that it's in inverter mode and it is not taking really any power because all it's doing, all it's powering right now is the battery charger downstairs, okay? Uh, here's our battery pack. This is a 48 volt battery pack. Um, there are 16 six volt batteries. Uh, they are 430 amp hour batteries. So we've got them in parallel. Uh, we've got eight in parallel. So we have 48 volts and 860 amp hours. Now, uh, if I was just running the lights and things in the house, uh, that uses about what I, uh, on this thing here, according to my little readout there at 48 volts with just lights and things on in the house, maybe the refrigerator and stuff, we're only at about eight to 10 amps. Uh, so 860 amp hour battery, if we say we're going to use 50% of it before we, you know, before we have to stop, 
Uh, we've got 430 amp hours at at eight amp hours, maybe even 10, you've got what, 40 hours, right? So we could run off of just batteries for 40 hours if we didn't charge them up. Right now, the only method we have for charging them up is the generator down there, which I'm gonna turn on here in a minute once we're done up here talking about this. Um, but eventually, we'll have solar, and we don't have that connected right now. Have I checked out the Battleborn lithium batteries? I, I know about Battleborn, but I have not checked them out specifically. I would love to expand and have a whole lot more batteries up here. I would not be, uh, it would not be out of the realm of imagination to, to have several large battery packs up here. This is the solar combiner panel. Uh, all of the solar wires, when they do come in, and I was hoping to be able to do that yesterday and today, but not with all this snow. But when I do get the wires from the solar panels into here, they will all combine. There's a breaker for each set of solar panels and then it goes to a bus, and then we've just got a positive and negative that will go out. They'll go into our trough here, and then up into here, and down to the charge controller, which is down there. That, from what I can gather, that is going to be my best bet for having an automatic turn-on of the generator. These little wires you see right here, if I set the generator to automatic mode, and I touch those wires together, I've got it set up so that touching those wires together turns on the generator, taking them apart, turns it off. So my thinking at, at worst case, like if I can't get this thing to play nice and, and automatically do that is I will put some sort of a sensor, some sort of a voltage sensor that I can get information from. I may be able to get this, you know, information from this, but if I don't, I'll do something with home assistant ESP home and I will get a voltage sensor that says when the voltage battery gets below whatever is the threshold will decide, you know, 45, 44 or something, whatever, then close that relay, turn on the generator, right? Brrr, generator charges up, this goes. Once this voltage gets to, well, I don't even know. Would have to, I'd have to play with it because it's, it, it would go to like, well, no, it, it measures it, maybe 56 or something like that, and then it separates, right? That's a lot, of, that's a lot to depend on uh, ESP Home and Home Assistant to do and do right. So that would be, you know, I, I want to believe that I, I, would, I could rely on it, but I would be a little concerned. So I, I'm, I, it's going to take me a bit more time still to figure out. This thing has the ability to, to uh, it's got a couple of extra pins on it that you can, uh, terminals that you can connect to, and then it's got ways you can program it so that it'll do basically what I just said. If it's, you know, if, if you get below a certain voltage, it will activate a pair of terminals, a, a completely isolated pair of terminals, just like these. And then when it gets above a certain threshold, it'll take them apart. So hopefully that'll work, but we'll see. Midnight has an Ethernet port that uses RS-232, and that could pull. Not sure if there's an integration. Awesome. Well, let's, let's find out. I'm going to see. Uh, I'm going to look into that. So this was part of why I was talking about digging a trench or getting a Wi-Fi um, dish to, to beam up from the house um, because I need this, and then uh, the generator also has a, uh, an app and an Ethernet connection. So, yeah, this thing has, should be able to connect to the it, worst case – I can monitor it on my own through their apps, right? Of course, I want to integrate it into the home system, but if I don't, if I can't, at least I can monitor it on my own and I can trip a relay, you know, set the relay so that I can turn on the generator and turn off the generator remotely from wherever I am. Part of the reason that I drove up here today uh, is because I want to get the heater going before Janice and the kids all get here. So I had to drive up here like several hours ahead of everybody else so that I could get the heat going in the house. Now, if I, was, if I had all this connected, and I could just get on the phone or get on Home Assistant and go click and turn on the heat, then I could still be at home. I'd probably be packing, packing more orders. I didn't see what somebody just said. What was that last bit of chat? Dang it. Somebody just asked a question, and I missed it. I'm sorry. How long of a drive from home? Uh, normally two to two and a half hours. Today, with all the snow, it was almost four. I left at 7.30, so it was four hours, yeah. Um, I slid out a couple times. It was crazy. All right, so something to, to show you here, this, uh, this switch here, it will isolate the generator. So if I, right now, like I said, the generator is set up to charge the batteries, and then the batteries go to the inverters, those are two inverters, and that powers the house. That goes to 240 volts, whatever, and powers the house. If I want to switch to the generator and just have the generator pass through, that's my pass-through switch. So boop, I pass through. 
These are 5.6 kilowatt inverters, so I have two of them. They're peak 5.6 kilowatts, but I think they're, they're, like if you wanted to run them for a long period of time, the max is 4.4. So if we say I've got 8.8 .8 kilowatts of continuous power, if I use just these, the generator is 14 kilowatts. So if down at the house, like I've told the, the workers, the guys that come up here and work, your electrician was very neat. The box came this way. This is, this is the, uh, this is, the box came this way from Unbound Solar. Um, I've had other issues with them, but I got to say, they build a good box. Like this right here is pretty nice. I, I totally agree. There's no wasted wire. Everything is, uh, and it was all connected. Like the only things we connected was the battery terminals going in here, some of this stuff. The generator and the battery terminals from outside. This is a temperature sensor for the battery pack. And that's it. That's what we, that's what we hooked up. Everything else was already done in there. Uh, so what I was saying, like if we have a, if we have a lot of load down at the house, I'm afraid that someday you come there and it's all stolen because everything is open. Oh, we're gonna have. Thank you guys. I, we're this doesn't have a gate on it yet, but it's going to. So I guess for now, they could try and steal it all. But um, I guess that's another reason for the cameras, which I have. So. Um, I'd be able to actually, you know what? My contractor lives a couple miles, not even a couple miles away. And you know, this is Idaho. So there's a lot of guns. So if somebody came up here to steal it and I could see them on the camera. I would just call my contractor and he'd come over here and at least scare them away, hopefully. But yeah, I agree. We, in fact, not even just, uh, for the fact of somebody stealing it. Um, but, uh, I think by code you have to have these things locked up if they're above a certain voltage. I, I think I'm below that voltage, but the, the last, set of plans revisions we got back from the guy said we do need to lock it up so there will be a door down there uh, there just isn't at this point because we're only partially done with everything uh so i started saying so when we're down at the house and we're like working on things we've got like saws running and stuff or certainly if we turn the well like now when i turn the heat on and the water heater um there's nobody in idaho so nothing to worry about nice <laughs> uh then um we just run the generator I don't do the bypass though, so we're still kind of limited to the 8.8, .8, but that should still be okay. Wildlife, yeah, there's plenty of mice up here. That's for dang sure. Um, I wonder if we get a bear or anything up here, raccoons, stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know. Good point. Maybe I need to put some plywood down before we leave, because after we leave uh, this weekend, I don't, I'm not sure we'll be up here for quite a bit. Guns. I need to. Oh, this will be a great place for my Nerf turret. So, anyways, that's uh, that's that. Any other questions right now about the 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 power system and uh, if not i will go turn on the generator and we'll drive down to the house so lead acid batteries um you know right now just charging off the generator but that's there for the solar once i can get that someone has to pick those potatoes <laughs> hey cerebral dad how's it going yeah there's people up here but there's not very many which is which is lovely that is lovely all right let's go down and turn on the generator that's going to be noisy. So once I turn on the generator, uh, you're going to have a hard time hearing anything that I say probably for a minute just till we get away from it. So we can enjoy the peace. We do hear the highway. You see the highway out there? So they didn't show that on the, on the TV show. They wanted to make it look like we were really, really in the middle of nowhere. We pretty much are in the middle of nowhere. I love me some cables. Hey, Seamus, how's it going, man? Yeah, I like the power factory thing in there. I like the power plant. I think it's going to be good. I just... Uh, need more time to spend to make it make it right i love this is why the chair this this seat is here because i this is how i like to look now you can't see the mountains over there right now because of the clouds and such but straight ahead over there that's all mountains actually all the way around is mountains all the way over there is mountains um, the town is that way this is a mess forget the mess yeah seamus how you been man I haven't seen you in forever i do got a wind thing here but more solar stuff Anyways, lots of lots of stuff up here. This is my kind of work area. This is where we store things and work on things. So, all right. Cool pictures of the house from up here. I love that place. It's my happy place. Isn't that lovely? I don't think we'll be watching the sunset much tonight, though. All right, let's see if the generator will start. If the generator doesn't start, we're in deep trouble. Hopefully it'll do it. Let's see. And that's because they turn, turned off that freaking breaker. Oh, don't turn off the freaking breaker. Man. So that means 
I'm gonna have to try and figure out how to get it jump started with my truck. Ugh. 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 Maybe if I let it charge for a little bit. Let's go down to the house. I'll come back up and I won't bother trying to jump start it while you guys are are here. Oh, that makes me so so upset. It's the problem with having things like half done is I'm the only one that knows how to manage it. And somebody thinking that they're being helpful turns off the turns off that breaker and then my battery doesn't get charged in my generator. Dang it. Hey, look at that handsome guy right there. Hey. This is what I'm using today for streaming. <laughs> okay. Ah. Mm -hmm. ah. All right. Well, that really sucks. It'll be all right, though. We'll get it. Once we get it started, it'll be fine. Let's put this in four wheel drive this time. And we'll back up a little bit here. Strap a harmonica on that phone mount. <laughs> so this should be uh, high on the list of uh, of nerd dad Christmas presents. This thing, this thing to strap your phone to your face, is pretty useful. I'm gonna run over some things here. I don't exactly know what because it's covered in snow. All right. Oh, that's another thing we need to do. So we'll have to. I'm gonna have to come back up here in a bit fill up the well, fill up the well tank. Well, I should have lights in the house, so. Sign not to turn that breaker off. Yeah, I know. I, I did not think anybody would turn it off. I thought that they knew well enough. I, I don't... I do not know why somebody would turn that breaker off other than they just thought they were helping. I, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. It's, it's twice now that it's happened. I don't know who's turned it off. I'm sure it's just like a you know, contractor or somebody being helpful, but not very helpful. All right. I got to be a little careful here that I don't crash into something. All right. There we go. All right. Let's go in. Let's go see the Hobbit house. I love it, love it, love it. I told my kids I'm going to have this car till I die. All right, here it is. So we've had a lot of sloughing. I don't know if you can kind of see the black there on the house, but we have had a little bit of sloughing of the, of the uh, stuff. Now, there is very high likelihood that I'm going to slip and fall right here. Uh, that's a bit of a hill. Okay, great. <laughs> there is a hoobit hole compared to your house. This is my hoobit hole. Oh man, look at that drift on the on the snow there. Sheesh. <laughs> okay. I have no idea how messy this is going to be. We had contractors in here. Uh, it's going to be a little messy. Not too bad. Not too bad. So that's our piano. That thing's 180 years old, I think we decided. No. Yeah, 1884. So 140. Plow the road you, that you paid for? Yeah, somebody's going to have to plow it. So there's our fireplace. That's what the contractor's been working on. Looks pretty dang good. I like it. It's not real fire. It's an electric fireplace. It's fake, fake fire. So something new since the last time we were here is these beams. Check out those beams. I was going to stream about those last night, but uh, I wasn't up here, obviously. So those are the, the fake beams. That, that piece of stuff that I just used to kind of clear the snow away, that's what those are made out of. And they look awesome. 32-hour uh, work week. The norm gains support in Congress. Oh, fantastic. Sorry, I just got a news. I'm going to go for a 32-hour work week for sure. Ah, okay. Beautiful window view here. All right. Well, it could be messier. It's not the worst I've ever seen it. So most of you, if you've seen any of this stuff that we've done up here before, if you've seen the, 
the TV show or any of that, you've seen a lot of this. Like I said, the, the, the pillars are the new thing, the beams. Um, I guess for those of you that haven't seen it, let's take a look at a couple of these other really cool bits. So obviously the door is a main attraction, right? The outside of it you saw, but uh, the hinge here is, is a main attraction. That door has got to be over 200 pounds. That thing is crazy. What do I do as a day job or as content full-time? I wish, John, I wish content was full-time. No, I am an anesthesiologist by trade, by training, and that's what I do for most of my, most of my money. Um, so we got these custom-made stained glass windows, a tree, that was what Janice chose, and this is the Lonely Mountain. Pretty cool, yeah? Late to the game, what TV show? Oh, Cerebral Dad. This, it was uh, called Building Off the Grid. And if you go to Amazon, search for Building Off the Grid, look for uh, Season 12, Episode 3, you can watch us build this thing. You can watch us build it. Right from the, I must see Stanford. Oh, cool. She loves her anesthesiologist. Good. We typically are, are well thought of. We're typically, you just don't ask administration. If you ask surgeons and nurses and patients, we're pretty, we're pretty popular. Administrators, not always so much, so. All right, sleepy time. What, Andrew? You just got here. Greetings, programs. How's it going? So we do have all of the all of the modern uh, modern uh, comforts. That's actually a dishwasher. There is a garbage disposal. Uh, that's a gas stove. Uh, that doesn't really vent outside. Slow night bot, but it's working. Oh well, I'm glad. Oh, and by the way, this is only on YouTube, right? There's going to be no Twitch because I'm doing this live from my phone. So, so we have a fridge. Um, you guys have seen a lot of this, so stop me when you, when you uh, have seen everything you need to see. So the lights have been on in the house. Uh, I didn't turn those on. There's a couple of my light fixtures. So we've got two chandeliers that I would need to get uh, wired up and hung up here before too long. Should have squirrel on the stained glass window. <laughs> I don't think my wife would have gone for that. Uh, but those are two different two chandeliers. Pretty cool, right? When is the next 12 streams of Christmas? Uh, Sunday. But I will be live tomorrow as part of the Home Assistant Conference. Am I using LumenCast? Yes, I am, KDOT. Yes, I am. We're going to go down and see it. What was the name of the show? Building Off the Grid. Building Off the Grid. LEDified. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, so master bedroom here. Oh, you've got to see this part, right? For those of you that haven't seen the TV show and you don't know what's going on here, this is... This is the pantry, right? Just the pantry. Nothing here but a pantry. We do have microwave and things. And then this is a secret door into the master bedroom. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's made by a company called Murphy Doors. Uh, they make them here in Utah and also in Kentucky. And they are awesome. I love that window. That's my sunrise window. Um, we do have a big old walkout. Whew, it's a lot of snow and a lot of brightness, but big walk out here. This is a fully open door, so this, this is a bifold door. So when this opens, this whole thing is open out to that. It's pretty cool. You want a hidden door so bad? Murphy Door, man. Murphy Door, John. They are awesome. Uh, so master bathroom here. It's pretty small, but um, one of the key features here is this. We call it Dragon Scale dragon scale tile in the master and because of the dome you know we get these funky walls right because of the way the the ceiling is and stuff so we got these funky walls and funky shapes in the in this uh, bathroom but there it is and then this is another gorgeous view of what we've got outside which is awesome thank you andrew thank you there's that guy again <laughs> all right uh so let's go downstairs because i think what everybody is very interested, or at least you guys would be very interested in seeing, would be the um, would be the mechanical room with a lot of that stuff in there. Oh, yeah, the lights are on, so I'll be okay with the lights. Okay, so down we go. So we've been working on getting this wainscoting in, and we've obviously been staining it at different stages just because that's been the way it's been around here. So, yes, I do have lumen cache. This is actually lumen cache. So that's just a strip of LEDs that's underneath the edge there. Pretty cool. We just barely put in this last time, so it hasn't been sanded or stained or anything. Um, all right, let's see. Pool table, pretty awesome. 
And then we do have, let me, let me turn on a few more lights here. Let's see. Because I want to show you this other, this other. All right, so we've got more lights here. I'm going to close this because this is another secret. Shh, don't tell anybody. Oh, come on. It's a little stuck. That one's a little tighter than the other one. Oh, we do have some very cool Hubit art. So very cool Hubit art. I couldn't read what that I couldn't read that message, I'm sorry. Oh, we normally have he put the chess pieces away. We normally have uh you know, this is a Lord of the Rings chess set that we have on this table here. That whole area right there is gonna be a map of Middle Earth that we have. Pretty sweet, right? So that's gonna be the map of Middle Earth. All right, now, can you see? You can't only see barely, but here's another wall, another bookcase, right? Now, there's no light in there right now, but that door opens, so that's another secret door. And this is another secret door, and then we've got a TV room in here, so I do have a couple of blue lights just for, just for kicksies. But this is the TV room. Yay, TV room. Because we're barbarians. We're hobbits, not barbarians. We still have to have TV. And then here's where the magic happens as far as uh, all of the fun things. So I will point you through everything that's in here, okay? This is where you guys are really going to get to nerd out. Okay, so this guy right here. This is the geothermal heat exchanger. So this is a ground source heat pump. And my glasses aren't working so well anymore. I can't see. Hobbits, not barbarians. Yes, check. <laughs> All right, so these black pipes here and those black pipes up there, those go out to the geothermal pipe field. So those go out the house here, and then they're out there uh, on the hill, there is a there was a huge trench, uh, 30 feet wide, 100 feet long, 8 feet deep, with three rows of spiral pipe. It's like an inch and something, inch and a half pipe. I don't even know how many feet of it. 900 feet, maybe more of it. Um, your wiring OCD is kicking in. <laughs> so what this does is it takes, uh, when we're trying to heat the house, it takes the cold from, in, from the house, which is kind of hard to understand for me, but basically it takes the, the fluid that's in the pipes that are out there in the, in the um, field, and it dumps cold from out there and heats up the heats up fluid in this tank and the fluid that's in this tank then runs through the floors here through these valves and such and heats up the house through the floors it's actually not really cold in here even though it's like snowing and totally miserable outside let me see what the temperature is i bet you it's in the 50s in here it's really not that cold what's that say 56 56 it's not so bad i don't think it's bad i don't know compared to outside so anyways, geothermal heat exchanger, radiant heat in the floor. Uh, this is just the regular water heater, water softener. That's not terribly exciting. Because we don't have a normal air conditioning furnace kind of a system, we've got to have a little bit of fresh air. So this is our little bit of fresh air. It's only like, I think it's only like 130 CFM or something like that. It's not very much. That's hot, huh, guys? <laughs> oh, 56 C, I wish. No, actually, I don't wish. That would be melting. Uh, anyway, so that, that sucks air out of a couple spots in the house and pushes it outside and it brings air from outside and they, they mix the temperature and humidity together and then uh, it pushes some of that fresh air back out. Uh, that's an expansion tank, expansion tank. Now, you want to look at the electrical stuff, don't you? Yes, you do. Okay, so starting down here, this is the Home Assistant Amber. Yay, this one's POE version, Home Assistant Amber which is now going to be Home Assistant Yellow. We'll, we'll talk about that a little more tomorrow at the Home Assistant Conference. Um, this is my Reolink NVR. Really only three cameras maybe hooked up to that right now. This is my 24-switch uh, POE switch, right? 13.3C for those of us on the other side of the world. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so that's my POE switch. And then this is... Well, these, this is uh, alarm wires for the front doors and a couple of windows. This is Lumen Cash. This is Lumen Cash. So, uh, 
I actually feel like my wiring is, is better than it would have been otherwise. But this is the basics of the Lumen Cache system right now. So everywhere there's a switch, so an input of some kind or other, you need one of these. If it doesn't have a driver on it up here, it's because it's just going to a switch. So I've got a few places where the switch is not actually directly connected to the lights. And that's what this looks like. With a patch panel. Oh, I don't know. This is a patch panel, I guess. This is, this is the Lumen Cache panel. So you plug these uh, PDM. No, this, this is the PD, PW Power Distribution Module, PDM. These are the, oh, I can't remember what he calls these. Anyways, these are the inputs. So this is a switch. So each time you have a switch, you've got these things. Now, um, got to have a rack. <laughs> uh, what we've got here, now these are the LED drivers. Okay, so these, these black ones are constant current. There are some that are constant voltage. They're red, actually look like, here, I've got a couple of them here, right here. These are the constant voltage ones. So if you use these, Whatever voltage is coming out of your power supply is what's going to go to your lights. If you're using these, then you set them to whatever current you're going to want to go out to your lights based on how many uh, fixtures or what your fixtures are on that circuit. Uh, and you only have options of like 0.75, gosh, what is it again? It's all in milliamps, like 0.75, 1, 1.5, and... 1.75 or something like that. I can't remember. There's four options. There's four options for how much current one of these can put out, and, and the max is only like one and a half amps or something. So, but these are the these are the constant current modules. So these go to lighting circuits, right? So this one goes to kitchen number one, and that's it. It's not on. It, it's on this. It's just the the current, and then the current. This one or this uh, this driver because of this jumper is actually listening in on this switch which is this switch here, which goes to the extra back door switch. All right, that's where that one is controlling, okay? So when I flip this switch, this, oh, there's no driver on that one. It's not that one, it's a different one. Where is it? It's this one, sorry. Jumper was in the wrong place, it's this one. Front door, so this switch goes to the front door. So when I flip on the front door switch, this one goes on, and actually this one does too, I believe. Both of those two go on. They're both listening to this switch. Okay, so that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is the way that I did it more often is all of these. And on these, I've got the module, the switch module down here, connected to the driver. So these pins on the top of the switch module here, you can just plug the driver in there. And if you do that, then in your circuit, you just wire in the switch uh, into the circuit so that you've got one circuit that's got the switch module and the driver on it. And that's how I did most of the house. So that means I, I took one wire from here, ran it out to where it was supposed to be, ran it through all the places where the fixtures were going to be, and then ran it down to a switch. And then I used this combination. In other places, I ran a wire just to the, just to the fixtures, and then another wire just to the switch. And then I combine them, or I, I link them together through these jumpers. So there is also a, a, a smart module for this where I'll be able to use MQTT and control it all with the uh, home assistant, but I haven't gotten to that point yet. So questions, what do you guys think about that? Um, what else is there in here? Those, that's the big stuff, right? That's the big stuff. I've got tons and tons of, of uh, ethernet jacks throughout the house. Let's see, very interesting. What is this? <laughs> this is my lighting. This is my lighting panel. So my lighting is all low voltage DC lighting and it's all running through ethernet cables. So I have all the switches coming back to this location. Yes, Clint, that's exactly right. All the switches come back here, and none of the lights, except maybe lamps, are run by 120 volts. Million dollar question, if you had the opportunity, would you do that setup again? Yes, I like it. I would do it differently, but I would use this same system again, unless I found another one that was comparable. What was that noise? Unless I found something else that was comparable, I would use this again. How many panels do I have? Those I have another. I have a third panel, but I don't need it. I, only, I have two, and that's all I need. Needs more blinking lights. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the, having the low voltage uh, DC lighting. I think it makes a lot of sense. And uh, this is a decent system once you figure it out. What would I do differently? I would run more wires, Luis. I would run. I would run more wires. I would definitely. Um, 
Yeah, I would run more wires. I'm getting into the problem sometimes where I've, I want to have, like in this, this room's been okay, but I've got five fixtures here, right? So five fixtures and a switch. And what I've found is that depending on the fixtures, uh, if you have, if the fixtures draw too much current, if you, I'll show you in a minute what they do in the bedroom. So if you get the wrong fixtures, if you get fixtures that require too much current, then you're in trouble. And so I think I would, what, what Derek, who makes this system, recommends, and I couldn't see myself doing this, but what he recommends, I think if he had his, his options or his, his, his wishes every time, you would run an individual Ethernet wire to every single fixture. Now, if you think about what that would mean in, in a room like this, that means each of these would have an individual Ethernet cable going back to the panel. That's a lot of wire, but more importantly, that's a lot of ports. I mean, that means for each of these... For, for each fixture in the house, you'd have to have a port. And each of these has 16 ports, and each of these costs like 200 and something bucks. So I'd need like four or five of these, I think, to, to accommodate every fixture in the house if I were to do it that way. So I, I don't think I would do it that way. I think I might do two fixtures at a time and, and leave it at that because that gives you uh, the ability to have um, – that gives you the ability to have – uh, bigger, brighter fixtures, but not quite so many. Um, and but you know, in some cases, it's fine. Like these lights are fine. Can I dim these lights? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna step out of here for now. I'm gonna turn that off. We're gonna step out of here. But yes, I can dim these fixtures. And this is a really cool feature with LumenCache is I can just hold this. If I hold the button, all right. So I'm just gonna hold this, and you see them dimming, right? Now, the nice part here, so if I turn them off, or if I hit the switch, they turn off. When they turn back on, they turn back on to the dim setting. If I hit it again, they turn on to the bright setting. And then I hit them again and they go off. So pretty cool, right? And if I just hold it, they'll start to get bright again. And if you set them to 100%, once you've held it long enough, then they just go on and off. So it's really cool. And actually, the, those switch modules, they do, I think it's about seven or eight different, uh, different, um, if, uh, different uh, switch modes. Honestly, if we have all the options to make that possibility in our house, something, something, I'm sorry it went away. Possibility in our homes, we would jump on it. Centralized management, yeah. I think it's the way of the future. I really do. I really think it's a good, a good way to do it. Makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. Now, let me show you what happens. I had to replace these. I had some brighter fixtures here, and ignore this one in the middle. This one is actually supposed to be a, um, you know, a cool uh, over-the-pool table kind of a fixture that I haven't um, built yet, um, but that, that, that's coming. But I had to replace these. I had some brighter ones here, and the problem was they, they flickered. And let me show you what happens if you get... Um, basically the other than I don't know what else to say other than the wrong kind of fixtures so when I turn this room on when I turn this bedroom room on see that that's what happens when uh, it's drawing too much current there's only four fixtures here but these are different fixtures and I think they're a little brighter so they have a little higher current draw now it's okay with these fixtures if I hold my button until it increases it'll increase eventually it'll stop flickering there now it's fine but when I go to turn it off, it flickers, and then I can turn it again, it turns it off. So every time we have to power down the house, I have to come through and do that again in these lights. And then I just have to tell the people that are using the, the rooms that, that they need to touch the button twice. Okay, now this one, this one was already done, so that's good, because we didn't turn off the power last time we left the house. So. And then the, the lights I have, they do have the option of having blue or regular lights, you know, blue or like a yellow uh, so on a couple of these, I put blue just to be, just to be fun. All right, continuing the tour, we do have uh, our back to tank bathroom. So this is our back to tank. That's what the kids. That's what Zachary calls it. He's a big Star Wars guy. So this is a back to tank bathroom. It's about the smallest bathroom you could get. There's that funny looking dude again. We have, we tried in so many ways to do so many things to make this house cool, right? And we got towels with cool things on them like that. Cool sinks like this. All of our sinks look like that pretty much. What are the lumen outputs? I don't know. I'd have to look them up. So those fixtures, so these, see that there? Those are fixtures I basically had to make, right? I mean, I, I bought the this part and the diffusers, but I had to wire them up and put little LEDs in there that would work with lumen cache because, you know, you can't just 
plug and play with the lumen cache stuff. Um, you gotta, it, it, there's a lot of fixtures that will work. Um, like even these, these come with a voltage regulator on each one that will take it from 120 volts down to whatever it uses. I just take those off, hook it up to my constant current driver, and then they work, right? So those ones aren't too bad to, to modify, um, but it doesn't just work with any regular fixture. All right, this is our big bathroom. So big tub bathroom. Again, cool light fixture, decorations, two cool towels. I mean, like we really went all out. Cool sinks, right? This part, this is amazing. I love this. I love everything about this. So fantastic. All right, I'll turn that off. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be... I'm not sure that's big enough. Hopefully he measured. Anyways. All right, we'll turn this light off. Oh, see, it got brighter because I had dimmed it. So let's, so if I turn it on, it's dim. Hit it again, it goes brighter, and turn it off. Uh, I was fortunate to see your TV debut. Your acting with the cement was first class. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah. Some of that cement stuff was real. Some of it I did have, I did fake. All right. Okay. So we're going back. Let's go back upstairs. Um, turn the lights off down here. All right. What else you guys want to see? I can show you the backyard. Low, ba low power. I'm low, low power mode. So I'm already, what am I at? 41 minutes. Okay. Well, we'll go till my phone dies. It was at 100%. So we'll go till it dies. Now, uh, we'll go out the backyard here and I'll show you some of this oh we've had a little bit of landslides here but i'm very proud of my railing i built that railing that is those are like five dollar posts and we're losing him yeah probably and uh i just really love the railing of course we have a hot tub we can hardly ever use oh. Janice, she was pretty funny about it. She did not, she did not hold back telling the, telling the TV people that it was lame that they would have us pretend to lose a part when we had, we had actual real drama that they could have used, but instead they had us pretend to lose a piece. Ugh. So, all right. all right. What do you think? I think we're probably. I don't know how the battery's doing. All right, let me see. I'll sit down here and look at the chat for a minute, and I can answer questions. If you want to see something else, let me know. Very late, but you made it. All right, sir, good enough. We didn't think you were going to be here. Glad you made it, buddy. All right. Let me turn the camera around, and then you love the whole. Thank you, Mike47. How's it going? I'm going to have to have these on if I'm going to read any chat. Ugh. So this is where I will be streaming from tomorrow. Can't wait for a future episode of this place. Thanks. Sorry I missed it. Did you talk about your new home assistant box downstairs? A little bit. The home assistant box downstairs is uh, the, um, what's it called? The Amber. Home assistant Amber. So it's a Raspberry Pi 4 with a custom foot board, whatever you want to call it. You know, the board that it sits on. That's custom made by the home assistant guys. It has a Zigbee uh, receiver built in. And it's got USB ports. It's PoE. Mine's PoE. Oh, of course, I'm wearing my Michigan hat. Go blue. So now my phone says 10. It's 10%. Oh, you know what? I could charge it. Why don't I charge it? Off topic, but sacrificial pixels still needed with the new quads. No, but you can use it if you run into troubles with the flickering problem. So we have had some flickering problem. Ooh, where's my... Here it is. Uh, but generally, no, the sacrificial pixel is not needed, um, but it won't, it, it, it may, it may help solve the flickering problems. If you, if you're having flickering problems, you can still put in a, you can still put in a, um, sacrificial pixel. All right. It's got a little bit of juice. There we go. Power. Okay, it may say Bluetooth connected. connected. All right, did my did my um, did my sound change? Tell me if my sound changed. The house looks really comfortable. It is so comfortable, Tony. I love being here. 
How do I like the Amber? Is it worth the overall cost in your opinion? You know what, Seth? I, I haven't used it much. I think the idea of having a dedicated Home Assistant hardware is good. Um, so I, I don't, and they, of course they sent it to me, so I don't know what it is. JK2, how's it going, Joel? Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know the cost, to be honest. What is the cost of it? I would say it's worth, you know, it's worth a hundred bucks, probably maybe a little more. New Home Assistant Amber, yellow is always Amber, stable over PoE. Mine, mine seems to be stable over PoE. We will know more after this weekend. Does it maintain the temperature well? Fantastic. Like, the heat hasn't been on in this house in days. It's obviously freezing cold outside and it's 56 degrees in here. So it maintains the, the, the temperature in here unbelievably well. 50, 150. I mean, what are you gonna pay for a, I don't know what the specs are on it, but if you think about a, a blue, or not a blue, a um, Raspberry Pi 4 with the memory, um, a Zigbee dongle, you know, PoE, I don't know. I, I think it's probably, if you're, if you're really tight, if you're on a budget, you're on a tight budget and um, you're okay with like loading your own stuff from a Raspberry Pi or whatever, then, then yeah, you could, you could still do that and you'd save some money. Um, I think having it all in one with the, the, the memory, um, you know, it comes preloaded with Home Assistant. It's got the Zigbee dongle included and it's PoE. Man, I like it. Am I powering it off solar, yummy? Yeah, I, so if you, when, when I'm done here, I'll be done here in the next 10 or 15 minutes. When I'm done, you can go back and watch the beginning and you can see that uh, the whole power station that I went through and spent the first 20 plus minutes of the stream today going through the, the, the power up at the, up at the pavilion, the, the power station that we have. So you can see all about it. But right now the, the, um, the solar panels are not connected. So right now we're running off of batteries and the generator. So that's our, that's our system currently. And we, we charge the batteries with the generator. Four gigabyte plus, it's plug and play. That's not a bad deal. See, I, I'm glad you think so, Ben. I, I'm sure that the Home Assistant guys are not trying to, um, you know, rake anybody over the coals on price on things. They're, they're trying to make a, a, enough of a profit to make it worthwhile and that's it. Let me go check real quick, okay. Um, so yeah. I love these beams. Are those not so cool? Those are foam, guys. Those beams are foam, and that's where I'm gonna run the wires for the lighting, the low voltage lighting. Should do a M2 drive. Oh, I didn't see the rest of that, so good enough, sorry. Ordered an amber to replace the nook. Reminds me that I need to subscribe to Nabucasa. Nab the subscribing to Nabucasa is a good idea. Um, so yeah, tomorrow morning, um, about this time, I believe, it's gonna be around noon. I think it's 12 o'clock. If your generator battery is dead, that is. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear what you said first, Chris. Did you say you'd come help me jumpstart it? Because <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. When I get off the stream, I'm gonna drive my truck up there and hook it up to the, hook it up. Well, I'll drive my truck up there, I'll get in position to jumpstart it, and since it's been charging for an hour, and since it's connected, since I have that breaker on, it may start up, it may start up. What am I running for a generator? Oh, good question. So it is a Kohler, K-O-H-L-E-R. It's a Kohler 14.4 kilowatt propane generator. And we've got a thousand gallon propane tank that's buried out here. So that's kind of our only, um, my wife just sent me a picture. That's of our only one, our only um, sort of coal burning or whatever. Not that we were really trying to avoid it. I, I would have rather had, oh, actually our stove burns it too. I would have rather had um, the water heater, the like domestic water heater run off of propane as well. But we didn't plan the, we didn't plan the exhaust. So when it came time to connect up the, the water heater, they said, well, where's your, where's your exhaust for your propane water heater? And we didn't have one and we didn't really have a very good way to, to add it. So we ended up with an electric water heater, which running on batteries and solar with an electric water heater is a horrible idea. <laughs> if, we run, if we run the water heater and the, the, the geothermal at the, and you know everything else, we're pulling over 100 amps uh, at 48 volts 
So at that rate, our battery will last four hours. That's not gonna cut it, not, not gonna cut it at all. So right now, uh, like for the next probably 12 hours, we'll run the generator full time. We'll turn it on and we'll, we'll run the generator and it'll, it'll, um, it'll charge the batteries, but we'll, we'll heat the house, we'll, we'll fill up the water tank with hot water, and then we'll turn it off. New places looking great, thanks. Need to check out that off the grid episode. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Bear Claw. Yeah, the, uh, check out uh, Building Off the Grid, episode 12, no, sorry, season 12, episode three. Um, and it's on, it's on, need to demand propane water heater. Yeah, I just need to, we need to build in a um, exhaust. SOK batteries, lithium iron phosphate based and reasonably priced. Okay, cool, SOK batteries. I don't remember what we paid for those batteries up there for that battery pack. It was the cheapest option and anyways. Heat pump on electric is much more efficient than gas and can feed from the panels. The heat pump for the, yeah, it's good. Oh, my mom's RV conversion and they've been great. Okay, cool. Well, we've got, you know, we have a lot of a lot of solar panels. So I think we'll be pretty good in the daytime when we can get a little sun. Um, and then we just need to have a sensor on it so it just kicks on the generator and it runs for a little while till the batteries get charged and then it kicks off again. That's, that's what the generator should be for, is just to kick on when we need the batteries to charge, turn off when the batteries are charged. And in most cases, even on a day like today, we should be getting some solar power and we're just not. High efficiency on-demand heaters that use the plastic 636 pipe for exhaust. Oh, really? I need to, I, yeah, again, when we, we did this because, with the TV show, and so we had to rush a lot of stuff. And so a lot of stuff got done without a lot of planning, and it ended up you know, not being ideal. A lot of time and effort, but are helping inspire you. Welcome. Uh, the daughters, I saw something. You know what's funny? Answer me this, guys. Program, the lights are turned off. <laughs> Answer me this, fellas, um, you smart, smart guys out there. Um, yeah, I w okay, let me, let me answer that in a second. But um, I think our GFI receptacles are tripping because of the power that's coming from the inverter. Like they don't like the power that's coming from the inverter. It says it's, you know, sine wave, something, something. But I think it's tripping our, our GFI receptacles. I hear them. I sit here and I just heard one a second ago, just click. And it happens all the time. And I got to go around and you know start them back up again. Um, it didn't do that before we hooked up the batteries. We were just running the house off the generator all the time, um, but now we're running you know off the batteries and the inverter, and it's just not. I don't know something's up with those. I don't know what to do about it. I don't know what to do about it. Now somebody asked a question. I think it was John asked a question about um, the geothermal system. Now here's another one where the the um, I had a mo make sure it has a good ground connection. Same issue with off-grid setup. Oh, okay, great. I'll look into that. Um, the, the geothermal heat exchanger, I expected, and when we first talked about it, um, my understanding was it was going to be part of our domestic hot water. And then the, the company that was doing it was... I think, I don't know the whole combination of it, and unfortunately I didn't have a lot of time to sort it out with them, but I think they were concerned that the house was gonna be really cold, like we were gonna have a hard time. They didn't know how much power we were gonna have, and they wanted to be really efficient with the water thing, and they didn't wanna get involved in doing the domestic hot water, and so they set it up so that it's just, just the geothermal and nothing else. I would really like to see if there's a way, maybe if I can talk to our plumber, the guy that did the domestic hot water heater and stuff, to still kind of tap into that. And because I think it would be much better to power some of our domestic hot water from the geothermal system and then have the, the other hot water heater just as a backup, which is what I expected we were gonna do. That's kind of what, that was what we talked about, was we were gonna have you know, some basic function, some basic uh, availability of domestic hot water from the geothermal system, in addition to heating the floors, and then a backup small electric or propane hot water heater for times when we need to have 10 people shower in an hour, right? Because um, that would probably take a long time for it to heat all that water up. That didn't happen. 
soft, oh, soft start. Yeah, they have soft start. Yes, they do. And our, our, even our, even our, um, even our uh, hot tub does. Actually, I don't know if the main water heater does. The geothermal system does. How deep are the coils? Eight feet. What do I have for a water supply? We have a well, and then we have a, I don't remember what it is, 1,500 gallon tank. Only makes sense they have the geo preheat the water. Saves work from the water heater, right, John? I know. So uh, that's probably something, it's certainly something that's on my list of things to revisit. Dump heat into the ground all summer, domestic hot water heater can make good use of that, right? So I, uh, we'll, we'll, we're gonna have to revisit that and I definitely want to incorporate that. But how deep are the coils? Eight feet, eight feet. The, the trench is eight feet deep. The water, so right now, if I go down there and look at the geothermal system, the water that's out there in the, in the pipe field is 50 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. How deep are your coils, baby? <laughs> Is that, a, is that a pickup line, Seamus? Is that what you tell the chicks at the bar? What is that? <laughs> How deep are your coils? Sounds creepy when you say it, when you put baby on there. <laughs> the tone of the love. Geothermal heat pump is the right way to go, yep. Prepared, filtered before heating in geo. Well water, oh, it's totally prepared. It's actually, in fact, the geothermal system is not connected to the well. It's a closed system. It's a closed system. It does have a way to, uh, we, we can fill it. In fact, I think he said I need to do that at some point. We need to check it. There's a, there's a pressure sensor, and if the pressure sensor starts to drop, then I do need to add water to it. But right now it's a closed system and it's, you know, it's filled uh, with filtered water and methanol. Very expensive currently, yeah. Geothermal systems are really smart, and I think they're really important, and I think we should all be using them um, but they aren't as cheap as the standard way of doing it, which is just, you know, natural gas and electricity. But if we were really designing a system for efficiency, there's no question that a geothermal system is the way to go. But they are, they're cheap, they're, they're more expensive, mostly because there's not a lot of people that do them, so the people that do them charge a lot. It shouldn't need filling unless there's a leak, right? And I think he said that it wouldn't need much, if any. You know, there may be some expansion and contraction, so you may get some gas that you need to vent out and, and replace with water, but it won't be much. That's why guys from the Geo didn't want to connect it to the shower and hot water. Oh, because they didn't want... Well, I, I think... I don't know. I think that they could... We could use... We could still use th that tank that's, that's got the um, hot water that goes to the floors, we could use that to heat other water. So you could take the well water, put it in a tank, that tank is lined with a coil of this other hot water, this other hot fluid that comes in from the geothermal system and gets heated up, and that heats up the water in the, in the, in the middle of the tank, which then you pump to the showers. That's, that's how, what, in my mind, how it should work. Um, but right now, it's, they're two separate systems. We've got the geothermal system that just is heating in the floor, and then we've got a separate hot water heater, which is lame to me. That's completely separate. So that's, that's kind of lame. What else, guys? We've got a few more minutes. I'm hooked up to the battery now. I should go get uh, the heat started soon. And even with geothermal, you're still dependent on electricity, which is mostly coming from gas-powered plants. You know, mine, it might be. Mine's not. I mean, and, even, and now there might be gas-powered plants, but they're not always gas-powered plants. It depends where you live. And it, and it certainly gets the, you know, gets the stuff away from us where we live. You can put the, if you have to have a coal, a coal burning power plant, you can put it out in the middle of nowhere where there's no people. Um, in a place that gets plenty of weather so you can blow out whatever smoke and crap uh, builds up. I can tell you that I've got the same, you know, the same argument for electric cars. I love having an electric car. I've got an electric car and drive it all the time. I think we should all have electric cars because most of our driving in the city is, is in those kinds of cars. And, uh, most of our pollution is in the cities and most of it is because of the cars. So if we can move that pollution, even if we're not getting rid of it completely, if we're just moving it out of the city, it's better for me, better for my lungs. Anyways, that's off topic. Somebody else asked me an off topic question about LEDs. Did somebody else have a question about LEDs? Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, I couldn't read all those. I can't read them all. I can't read them all. Any chance any more work on the Evokes? Not yet, Bearclaw, not yet. I wish. News on Permatrack, yes. 
Still can't order. Yes, John, you should be able to order this morning. I don't know exactly what time, um, but we have it. It's on the shelves and we are going to post it up for sale. I, I, Mike is not in town and he fills the orders. So he is understandably hesitant to post it when he's not here to start filling orders because he's, you know, he would then, I don't know, either way. ETA on a Dig Uno, if you bought, so yesterday, so I put those, I put the Unos and quads up for sale, whatever night that was, was it Wednesday night? And send a tag when it's open, we'll do. And uh, we got in, I don't know, 12, maybe a little more than 12 hours, we got um, 700 orders. Now usually a busy day is 100. A normal day is like 30 to 50 maybe. So busy day is 100. In one day, we got 700. Want to be off the grid home automation contractor? You're welcome the electrician to be a good place to start. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Be an electrician is good. Be an electrician and be a plumber. Those are, those are pretty important things. Um, anyways, so, and then now we've, we, we packed and shipped over 500 orders yesterday. So if you were in the first 500 of those uh, 700 orders, then we, we already, your stuff is already at the post office. And if you haven't got an email yet, you will. It delays a little bit um, when it, before it sends it out just because otherwise everybody's gonna get an email as soon as I print the label, but they're actually not gonna have a shipping, you know, any shipping information for at least a day. So it, 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 you will probably be getting those um, notifications soon that you have uh, a tracking number. But if you're not in the first 500, then I, I'm not gonna be home to start packing orders again until Sunday. So I apologize for a, a little bit more of a delay, but um, when we get home on Sunday, I will put in as many more hours as I can spare. I expect that by the time I get home Sunday, most everything will be sold out. All, the, all of the um, quads are sold out already and the boosters are sold out, but Quindor told me this morning he's sending 500 more boosters. And then uh, we still have quite a few Unos. We still have about 600 Unos, I think. So we still have quite a few Unos, so you can still get on and order Unos, and I will get them packed, you know, Sunday, and probably some will spill over into Monday. But we are doing first order, first serve. So we're filling orders that are oldest first, okay? Tested this show right up to 25 meters. Are you talking about, I can't remember what you're talking about, you're probably talking about the, the Unos or the quads or something. How much power does your wiring dissipate because of powering LEDs through low voltage. I, you know, it's, I, I don't know, Russell, I don't know exactly. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have those kinds of fine measurements on it. So I, I can tell you this, if, you know, it's because we usually run everything off, oh, off the F amp, okay, thanks, Ty. Um, because we usually run everything off, you know, high voltage AC, yet almost all of our actual light fixtures are doing um, LEDs. We, that means we have a voltage converter at each fixture, right? Each bulb is taking 120 or in some cases 240 and it's turning it into five, seven, nine something for the fixture, right? For the LED. So rather than do that and have every single bulb in your house dissipating some power, losing some power at the bulb, we're doing it at the panel. We have one power supply that goes from AC to DC and then each of those little converters uh, regulates what voltage goes out to the fixtures based on what they need. Do I usually keep stock of permatrat in the offices? Yes, Clint, yes, yes, yes. And that's an important point. We are going to have plenty of permatrack through the off season. Um, we're, we're, going, we're still gonna get the China stuff that we've been getting, but we're also gonna be getting some stuff from Canada. We've got a separate, uh, second manufacturer that's gonna be working with us that's gonna be making permatrack in Canada. Canada. Update on the wall facing LED track similar to the nano leaf line. Now I haven't done any of that at home Ace. I need to just do that in Zoe's, uh, Zoe wants room lights and that's what I need to do. Uh, but no, I haven't done it yet. Um, I gotta get, now I gotta get through the 12 streams of Christmas. <laughs> so tomorrow is a home assistant conference. I will be helping to host, oh baby Canada, oh baby. I will be helping to host which means you'll get to see me uh, in between sessions and um, it should be cool. It's not gonna be last year's conference. If you watch last year's Home Assistant Conference, it was pretty massive and there was a, a crazy amount of stuff. Um, Will, yes, yes. And he, he is in Edmonton. 
So uh, he's in Edmonton, and he'll do he'll do installations, and I think. Stubbs, Stubbs Christmas may get in on some insula- installations as too. Is it cold in the Hoobit Hall? No, Joe. Hey, Joe, how's it going? It's 56 degrees in here and I haven't had the heat on in two days. <laughs> Do I need a Canadian distributor? So we're going to be making it in Canada, Chris. And then uh, our guy there will probably be doing some distributing. He's going to be shipping it to us so we can ship it to other places in the U.S. I'm certain, I mean, inside of Canada, he should be able to ship. We've talked about maybe having him ship bulk international. Um, but yeah, certainly inside of Canada, we will have a we will have a local manufacturer making it in Edmonton. We're gonna keep our goal right now is no, it's not cheaper. Our goal right now is to keep the price the same as it is for the stuff that comes from China, even though it costs us uh, if, if I went percentage wise, it might be. 20% more, something like that. It costs us a significant amount more to make it in Canada, but uh, we're gonna try and keep the end price the same. When is the, U- the EU next, Johnny, next? I gotta find somebody to make some in the EU, I think, or, or at least to ship it there. We've also talked to China about, our China manufacturer about shipping in bulk to places if we could find distributors in different places, but you know, our China distributor, or the manufacturer in China, he's got some issues with, uh, with packing and timing and things. And, and it's getting harder and harder to get stuff out of China as we have all experienced. So trying to diversify our manufacturing is where we're at right now. So, and it's a lot easier for me to communicate. Uh, when will we have some track available in Utah? We have track right now, Ty. We just have to put it up for sale on the website. And it is the stuff from China. We won't have the Canadian stuff until... At the earliest, probably March. At the earliest, it'll be March before we have any of the Canadian stuff. And there'll be some differences. We'll talk about it later, but there'll be some differences. The China stuff is um, galvanized sheet metal. The Canadian stuff's going to be aluminum. Um, the size should be the same. It'll still fit the pixels the same. The distance between the pixels is the same. Ah, I can't read. That goes by too fast. Anyways. Why convert the power to DC to AC and then again to DC? I, you know what, Afimi, I asked that as well. And uh, the answer is about transmission, I guess, because if you took 48 volts from up there, well, actually the solar is even higher than 48 volts, but that, that's the answer that I get. I don't know if that's true. Part of it too is uh, so many of our things in our house run on uh, AC power anyways, refrigerator, microwave, you know, all these other things, they run off of AC TV and whatever. They run off AC power, so you're gonna need AC power anyways. So we are making them shorter as well. Yes, we are making them shorter. They're, so this this shipment that we just got, I think is the last shipment where they're five feet long. And so instead of being 60, or I guess they came out as like 59 something inches. A couple of people called us out and said, that's not 60 inches, it's 59 something. Now I'm 10 inches short. Like, ah, okay, sorry. Anyways, but instead of being 60 inches, they're gonna be 46 inches because we're trying to get it in a smaller box to make shipping easier. So we're gonna put it in a 48 inch box. So the the pieces will be be 46 inches. They'll be 22 pixels per bit, okay? Um, But yeah, we should be getting, we should, it should be getting posted. In fact, I'll check in with Mike. He's still not home, but he said he was gonna post it this morning. So I will check in with him and see. 10 inches (laughs) straight. Stop it, baby. All right, guys, well, what do you think? I should probably get going. I gotta get the heat turned on for these kids that are coming to play in our house tonight. All right, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Blade said he wanted to see the the house tour, but he wasn't here live, apparently. So he'll have to watch it on the rerun, right? He'll have to watch it on the rerun. Ugh. Problem with wearing glasses is once I wear them and then take them off, I can't see a dang thing. I can see Nicholas said something. Somebody said, thanks, Doc. Thanks for sharing. Have a nice one. Something, thanks. All right. So, as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. Have a great day, guys. See you tomorrow. Tune in to the Home Assistant Conference. I think it's at 11 Pacific time. 11 a.m. Pacific time. It'll be broadcasting through the Home Assistant YouTube channel, and I'll be there. See you then. Bye. If I can find out how to stop this thing. Where is the button? Where is the button? (laughs) This will be one of those streams I can't turn off.
¿No? ¿No? What is this? Oh, filters? No. <laughs> help me! Somebody help this guy. Somebody help the doc turn off the stream. Oh my gosh. Is it really this? Oh, wait, maybe that's it. Okay, bye!